We often see Survivor in the modern era defined as a game of social and strategic manipulation, and we can really forget about how the game was initially designed, with a large emphasis on the challenges and surviving in the wilderness. The castaways have had to face some crazy conditions when they are on the island, from tropical storms to cyclones, and from extreme heat to torrential rain. But often, some of the most difficult positions they are put in can be within the challenges. This is analytical strategy, and today, although there has been a range of different styles of challenges in Survivor, we are going to put an emphasis on some of the more brutal challenges in the history of the game. From physical pain, to mental pain, from injuries to evacuations, these challenges have had it all, and can really display the internal drive some of these contestants have to take it all the way. So without further ado, let's get into these 5 brutal challenges. So firstly, I personally believe many of the endurance challenges as a whole can be absolutely brutal. There are many times where castaways have been put in awkward and painful situations, where they can last hours upon hours to win that immunity necklace. Whereas a viewer, I think I could personally only last a few minutes, and I would be taking the first food item offered to me. So whilst there have been a vast range of endurance challenges that I could have included in this list that I would deem to be brutal, I'm going to focus on the final immunity challenge within Survivor Thailand. This challenge was titled Slip Through Your Fingers, where the contestants had to hold a Thai pose whilst having coins within their fingers. If they run out of coins they are out of the challenge, and the last person standing wins immunity. Now most endurance challenges seem easy for the people that do last a long time within them, but this one just looked extremely painful for everyone involved from the get go, and it was even slightly difficult to watch overall. Given the contestants in the final three consisted of Jan and Clay, this challenge didn't last very long, so I can only imagine the pain if this challenge went for an extended duration. The force of the pose itself is physically exhausting, as you can tell by limbs shaking from the offset and the mental aspect adding onto it to ride through the pain is an extremely difficult circumstance to be in. This to me has to be up there with the most brutal endurance challenge the game has ever seen. Now the next challenge we will discuss is deemed brutal purely through the evidence alone of injuries that occurred to multiple contestants just through this individual challenge. It goes back to Survivor Micronesia within the reward challenge titled Cat and Mouse. Within this challenge, contestants were divided into pairs, where a pair on one tribe had to chase down the pair on the other tribe to snatch a flag off their back within a minute duration. If you get the flag, you get a point, and if you don't, the other tribe gets a point. Winners received a nice meal with steak, sausages, vegetables, and wine. Now on the surface, this challenge seems pretty straightforward, and unlikely for any minor or major injuries to occur. But as they can be, appearances can be very deceiving. The real problem with this challenge was the course design, which was basically just one giant hazard in itself. Not to mention that the slower person between the two being tethered together has basically no option but to be dragged along. Hence one of the injuries in this challenge being Chet smashing his head into the structure being forcefully pulled along by the beast that was Joel. We also saw Parvati bust up her lip, Amy hurt her leg, and Penna's knee was punctured by the structure resulting in him being pulled from the game after it became infected. I'm not sure there has been an individual challenge with this many injuries before, as well as a medevac, and from that alone, this has to be a contender for the most brutal challenge of all time. So whilst Cat and Mouse was absolutely a brutal physical challenge, we are going to slightly change gears here, and focus in on a couple of similar themed mental challenges. And these require a really strong mind, and depending on the type of person you are, it could be extremely difficult from the offset. These two similar themed challenges revolve around holding your breath underwater, but in different circumstances. The first is Last Gasp, and this is where you are positioned under a steel grate, and you have to stay there for the duration of the challenge. And as the tide comes in, you will run out of breathing room. In the rules of this challenge, it literally says this. If the fear of drowning is too much, the person can bail out. So yes, that alone is absolutely terrifying in itself. I've heard many people state this challenge is literally their worst nightmare, being stuck in at times freezing cold water, struggling to breathe and finding a way to obtain air. I can really understand why this would be a horrific challenge for a lot of individuals. This relates highly to another breath holding challenge called Spin Cycle where members are strapped to a wheel that is constantly being spun. 
and these members get submerged underwater and need to grab mouthfuls of water at a time and then spit them into a tube. This one adds an additional layer of not having self-control. In Last Gasp, you are able to pull yourself out of it if it does become too much. But in Spin Cycle, it is up to your tribe mates to keep an eye on you to ensure you are not submerged underwater for an extended duration of time. Both of these challenges are mentally exhausting, and you really need a strong mind to overcome such difficult situations. Not to mention how brutal this challenge was for one Russell Hance, with it being the challenge his tribe threw to get him out of the game. It really was his last gasp. But moving back onto arguably the most physical challenge in the history of Survivor, we have Schmergen Brawl, which appeared in Survivor Samoa and then the following season in Survivor Heroes vs Villains. And this was before CBS deemed this challenge too dangerous to use again, due to its physical nature, being the first challenge to be officially banned from bringing back to the game. In this challenge, three members would battle to receive balls in any means necessary, and then they would pass them to their tribe members on a platform to shoot these balls across the arena into the opposing tribe's basket. Now within both Survivor Samoa and Survivor Heroes vs Villains, there were instances which clearly added to CBS banning this challenge from ever returning to the game again. Firstly in Samoa, Ben was kicked out of the challenge for deliberately and unnecessarily tripping Russell Swan after Jeff exclaimed it was getting too physical out there. We also had Mike Barassi have to be medically evacuated from the game due to low blood pressure after taking numerous hits within this challenge. So even though all of this occurred, production thought hey let's bring it back the following season for some more excitement, an excitement they did receive. We had Rupert ramming Jerry into the wall, we had JT pick up coach and body slam him to the ground, but again we basically had another medical evacuation, with James having a knee injury during this challenge causing him to be voted out, which was still impacting him at the time of the reunion show. This was an absolutely brutal challenge overall to say the least, with multiple medevacs, injuries and broken rules whilst it was in play and definitely could make the argument of it being the most brutal challenge in the history of the game. But on that note, that leads me to what I think would be the most physically gruelling challenge in Survivor history, and that was the opening reward challenge in Survivor Guatemala. And this is where the contestants had to endure a 24 hour, 11 mile hike through the Guatemalan jungle to reach a Mayan pyramid carrying all of their supplies with the winning tribe able to live in these ruins and also receiving flint as part of the reward. We saw some contestants really struggle in this challenge, particularly Blake who was struck by a local plant which hit him in the shoulder and embedded his shoulder with thorns. Luckily for him there was a nurse in his tribe in Margaret, but he still continued through the hike, violently vomiting due to a combination of the pain and dehydration. As the hike went on it really started to hit Bobby John, who experienced really bad cramping again likely due to overexertion and this dehydration. By the time the rowing portion occurred everyone was absolutely exhausted and even getting in or out of the boat was a struggle in itself. Again Bobby John even struggling to lift his legs at all to get himself out of that boat. Stephanie mentioned at the end of the challenge it was probably the most difficult challenge the game has ever seen, and I would have to agree with her, with it being extremely rare to have a challenge last the duration that this one did. It was a brutal start to an absolutely brutal season of Survivor, and for me, takes out the top spot as the most physically demanding challenge in the history of Survivor. So what do you all think of these challenges? Is there a reason we have seen most of these challenges only once? Please let me know down in the comments. If you are enjoying these videos, please hit that subscribe button to help this channel grow and it does enable me to push out more videos each and every week. This is Analytical Strategy and we are signing out once again. I'll see you on the next video. Bye for now.